Hi, I am Sangeeta Dhavala in front of you to take you through yet another fresh topic, substance use disorders, substance dependence, substance abuse and substance induced disorders. The main objectives when we are doing this lesson are going to be to throw light on the various types of substance use disorders, understand what substance dependence is and what substance abuse is and also make an effort to learn about the different types of substance induced disorders. There is a difference substance dependence, substance abuse and substance induced disorders. What is substance use disorder? Substance use disorder is a complex disorder that is characterized by the individual's preoccupation with procuring the drug. There is an absolute lack of control over his mind in trying to control the intake of the drug. Substance use disorders could generally fall into four different categories or four different stages. They are substance use intoxication, substance use abuse, substance dependence and substance withdrawal. These disorders could be caused by different substances and these may be legitimate or illegitimate substances. For instance, these substances could be alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, amphetamines, inhalants, marijuana, opioids, cocaine, fencidiline and the like. Substance use disorders are inclusive of substance dependence and substance abuse. What is substance dependence? Substance dependence is a condition when the person shows a problematic pattern with his drug use and involves any of these three conditions. There are total five conditions and if the person shows any of these three conditions, he can be diagnosed as having substance use disorders or substance dependence. First one is tolerance. As the word suggests, Tolerance is a state where the person does not experience any difference in his mental state and so he is forced to take more quantity of the drug in order to get the desired effects. Withdrawal He experiences a range of unpleasant symptoms when he is not on the drug. The person shows an inability to have control over the intake of the drug. The person spends a lot of time in trying to procure the drug and finally the person he gives up a whole lot of activities related to work as well as related to society to own the drug. Substance abuse. What happens during this stage? During this stage the person is unable to meet with all the obligations that are set out at work. He is unable to meet the obligations that are laid for him in the family, in the home or in the school. There is regular absenteeism and poor performance at workplace or in the school. The person gets into legal entanglements very frequently because he is on the substance always. He continues to stick to using these drugs despite being aware of the kind of harmful effects it will bring on his financial status as well as the relationship status. In case he cannot get his hands on the drug, there is every chance that he will become physically aggressive and behave similarly even in the intoxicated state. He is likely to pick up more arguments and probably get down to beating too. People develop these disorders for different reasons. They may be depressed, they are anxious, there is a family history, there is stress or there is some kind of 
unforeseen psychosocial problem. Addiction therefore has physiological as well as psychological components. Coming to substance induced disorders, what do these disorders include? The substance induced disorders again include intoxication, substance induced withdrawal, substance induced psychosis, substance induced dementia, mood disorders, anxiety disorders and various other disorders. Different people get affected in different ways. It is not necessary that if a person succumbs to a specific drug behaves like another person who has succumbed to the same drug. Each one comes in with a different disposition and hence they can react differently to different drugs. However, whatever be the kind of drug dependence they have, a few effects may be impaired judgment, increase or decrease in appetite and change in their sleep patterns. We are now going to learn more about the substance induced disorders and in the category first comes the alcohol related disorders. What happens in the alcohol related disorders? There is an uncontrollable urge on the part of the addict to consume as much as alcohol he can. And long term consumption is found to bring about numerous alcohol related disorders and these may be mood disorders, anxiety disorders, antisocial personality disorder and many more. Amphetamine related disorders. Amphetamine related disorders come with abuse, dependence, intoxication and withdrawal and these disorders arise because of inappropriate use of amphetamine. Amphetamine dependence refers to episodic binges with brief drug free periods of time in between use. Amphetamine abuse is less severe than dependence and has mild problems because of drug usage. Amphetamine intoxication refers to psychological changes and maladaptive behavioral changes which develop after using the drugs. Amphetamine withdrawal is a condition which shows the effects that surface when the drug is not used. So prolonged use of amphetamine brings in fatigue, insomnia, unpleasant dreams, agitation, increased appetite and a few other withdrawal symptoms. Caffeine related disorders. Caffeine when consumed in large quantities causes anxiety and this of course again varies from mild to moderate stages. The more it is consumed more are going to be the anxiety or panic attacks. Cannabis related disorders. These disorders include cannabis dependence, cannabis abuse and cannabis intoxication. What happens in cannabis dependence? There is a compulsive need to use the drug by the addict. Cannabis abuse, the addict reaches such an extent where its use causes a lot of legal problems for the addict problems at school, problems at home, problems at work and also even while driving. Cannabis intoxication. This stage sees the drug addict in a condition where he shows signs of lethargy, there is stimulated appetite, sleepiness, impaired motor performance and impaired judgment. Then comes the cocaine related disorders. What do we know about cocaine? Isn't it very popular? Yes, it is 
and is also considered as a very dangerously addictive substance and a very illegal drug. The user experiences a great high. He experiences a state of euphoria and at the same time he may also experience bouts of anger, irritability and increased sensitivity as well as anxiety. Cocaine related disorders are in fact many. They can be broadly categorized into cocaine use disorders and cocaine induced disorders. Depending upon the state in which the drug addict has arrived at, interventions can be thought of in the form of psychological and social terms and the treatment methods need not always be long term. If the drug addict shows signs of adjustment with psychological and social interventions, then the medical treatment can be kept low. Hallucinogen related disorders. Hallucinogens are found to bring about a change in the thought process of the people who use it. Called as psychedelic drugs, they are basically used in recreational purposes. LSD, marijuana, mescaline and psilocybin are a few of the very popular hallucinogens that are used by people. These are found to be minimally addictive and there are no great harmful physical side effects that its usage will bring about. Like a few other drugs, they do not bring about serious memory loss, but they are readily available and that too at very low cost. Therefore, there is a great risk that adolescents and children in young adulthood stages will find more access to the hallucinogens than to any other kind of drugs. After the hallucinogen related disorders, we are shifting our focus now to inhalant related disorders. What are inhalants? These include an expansive range of chemicals that are readily available for use by the people. They are aerosols and volatile solvents, gasoline, hairspray, rubber content, nail polish remover, spray paint, paint thinner, vegetable sprays are just a few of the examples of inhalants. Inhalant dependence is a condition when the person makes use of the inhalants continuously. Inhalant abuse is a condition that is less serious when compared to the inhalant dependence stage. Inhalant intoxication is a condition when the person uses the inhalant in order to get a high after using it. Now comes the nicotine related disorders. Nicotine is a popular ingredient that is found in tobacco and consumption of tobacco leads to a series of health related disorders. These disorders are caused because of the psychoactive ingredient that is present in tobacco. Nicotine is a physically and psychologically addictive drug. There are innumerable number of health risks that are associated with the usage of nicotine. Nicotine is absorbed through the skin, through linings of the nose and mouth and through the moist tissue linings in the lungs. So, when smoke is inhaled, it reaches the brain in less than 15 seconds. But when cigars and pipes are used, smoke is not inhaled. Problem arises when the smoke goes into the body. The problem intensifies when the person chews tobacco and snuff. For these people, 
nicotine gets absorbed through the mucous membrane lining and the nasal passages. There is a lot of physical dependence seen on nicotine because of the direct effect it has on the condition of the brain. There is psychological dependence also especially that is very prevalent in cigarette smokers. They take to smoking to fit in to the group that their peers belong to. They take to smoking because there is already someone in the family who expects them to follow suit. They take to smoking in order to gain acceptance from others. They take to smoking as a positive reaction to advertising or in some cases people take to smoking as an effort to reduce their stress and anxiety levels and in a few cases people take to chain smoking in an effort to gain control over their weight. What does treatment involve for the nicotine related disorders? There are different approaches that can be used but the therapist first has to identify both the physical factors as well as the psychological factors. The therapist also has to arrive at an assessment of facts. He needs to understand the frequency with which the person is indulging in nicotine, the social and physical attachments that are making him to smoke and also assess the kind of support system that is there behind the person so that the treatment could be effective. Nicotine is very widely used in cigarettes, pipes and cigars and the major effects that it brings about is loss of appetite and loss of weight. We will now look into what the various opioid related disorders are. This is a condition where the person uses opioids continuously in spite of having significant problems that are caused by its use. The individuals become physically dependent on the drug. Opioid abuse is a less severe condition and does not involve any physical dependence on the drug. The individuals may also fall prey to opioid withdrawal and opioid intoxication. There are significant psychological and physiological changes that come along with the dependence on opioids. People suffer from negative consequences because of its use. There is drowsiness, a feeling of heaviness, mood changes, itching, dry mouth and slurred speech when these people are under the influence of opioids. Our focus will now shift to fencyclidine related disorders. Fencyclidine was developed for medical use and was found to be unsuitable and it very soon became a street drug. Its effects are erratic and serious complications were also found to occur even for very low doses. Fencyclidine can induce mood disorder, psychotic disorder and anxiety disorder. There are three rough phases of fencyclidine intoxication that have been established. First is the behavioral toxicity. In this stage the people gaze blankly and their eyes dart vertically and horizontally. After the behavioral toxicity stage there is the stuporous phase where the person is in a kind of stupor. He appears to be wide awake but he is in a stuporous phase. Next is the comatose phase and this phase generally lasts between 1 to 4 days and the person is in coma. Next comes the group of disorders, the sedative, hypnotic and the anxiolytic disorders. What are sedatives? As the name suggests, sedatives are those substances that bring about sedation on the person. 
they bring about a physiological and mental slowness in the body. These substances are found to have legitimate medical uses, but people are found to greatly misuse this facility and they are improperly making use of the substances and falling prey to abuse, dependence, withdrawal and the intoxication conditions. Coming to hypnotics, what are hypnotics? Hypnotics are sleep promoting drugs and that is why they are termed as hypnotics. Anxiolytic drugs, these are drugs which produce effects like that of sedatives and they are found to reduce the anxiety levels, hence the name anxiolytic drugs. Dependence on sedatives is found to induce other mental disorders as well. Now comes the polysubstance dependence. Poly means many. This condition refers to a disorder wherein the individual uses a minimum of three different classes of substances indiscriminately. When three different types of substances are used within a span of 12 months, the person is diagnosed to have polysubstance dependence. For instance, the person may be using sedatives, he may be using cocaine, he may be using hallucinogens, but no single drug predominates. The person will not qualify as for cocaine dependence, he will not qualify for sedative dependence, he will not qualify for hallucinogen dependence, but he will meet all the criteria that are required for polysubstance dependence. People who have succumbed to substance use disorders for an extended period of time show physical, behavioral and psychological symptoms. What are the different kind of risk factors that exist that push a person to fall prey to any of these substance use disorders or the substance induced disorders? A combination of psychological, biological and pharmacological and sociocultural factors may push the person into substance abuse and dependence. We will now take a look at the various psychological risk factors. The person may have poor impulse control. He may not be in a position to take control of decisions. He probably has limited skills in problem solving and has high levels of negative mood. At the other end, there may be heightened risk taking behavior that is generally shown by adolescents. We will now take a look at the various social risk factors. The availability or rather easy availability of the substance and the price at which the substance is available can influence greatly the pattern and level of usage of a particular drug. Life events contribute greatly towards a person succumbing to a particular kind of a drug. A stressful episode, loss of spouse or some other condition will force the person to take to substance abuse. There may be work pressure, there may be a conflict in the family and the person may be experiencing financial difficulties. So when he takes to substance abuse, he can forget all these and run away from the complexities that life is posing. Pressure from friends. This is one dangerous risk factor which calls for a lot of determination to stay away from. Coming to the biological risk factors. There is adequate evidence that shows that heredity plays a significant role in a person falling prey to drugs. For instance, if we take alcoholism, when the father is an alcoholic, there is 
90% chances that the sun also will follow suit. Use of drugs brings about a change in brain chemistry and hence this will produce a desire for continuous use and reuse. We have seen the different types of substance use disorders. We have seen what is substance dependence, substance abuse and substance induced disorders. What are the various treatment options that are available for substance use disorders? There are again various treatment options. The first one is medication. There are a few medications in the market that are available for the people to use so that they can overcome their condition, they can overcome the withdrawal symptoms and they can also overcome the cravings they have for the drug during their treatment phase. There are medicines that will help them in dealing with depression too. Another form of treatment that has found lots of takers is counseling. Effective counseling helps people in managing their thoughts and motivates them not to take to drugs. It will introduce the individual to develop better coping techniques and strategies for times when he will have to use the drug again. There are the withdrawal programs. These programs focus on the process of detoxification. Then we have the community support groups. Support groups like Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous are found to be extremely helpful for those people who want to gain some kind of an assistance and resolve their problems with substance use and substance abuse. Thank you.